The Oath on 106.3 The Buzz, Johnny Thrash, along with Mr. Tommy Victor of Prong. You know, the best part of this job is every now and then someone that I look up to so much from when I was a kid actually takes a few minutes to talk to me. So thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure, Johnny. I love your delivery. you got the pro thing going on. It's really cool. Hey, I really yeah, appreciate man. that. <clears throat> yeah, no, this is great. Now, brother, you know, uh, Beg to Differ was like the soundtrack of my life when I was 17 years old. I felt like you were one of the one of the best bands going at that point. Not that you're not now, but it, you were really hitting your stride. And, it, and it, I, I really felt that, you know, it, it was Prong's time. And by the time you hit Cleansing Man, you were just, you were blowing everybody out of the water. And I feel like Prong was probably the first industrial metal band. Would you agree with that? One of the first ones, yeah. I mean, it's hard to say uh, where it actually came from, but uh, we were intent upon that. Uh, I mean, I, I must put my hats out to, you know, like Ministry and, uh, you know, Skinny Puppy we were big influences back then. So combine that with hardcore, like New York hardcore, and then thrash, and that's where you got Pong. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it's really hard to put Pong in a certain t- category, uh, but uh, now they're saying it's alternative metal. So, <laughs> yeah. You know. Oh, man, the ass-kicking, ruining lives out now. Any Prong fan, you will not be disappointed whatsoever. I felt like Carved in Stone was one of the best you'd done, and this one really ups the ante from there. And one of the things I've noticed from, uh, when, from when Carved in Stone was released until now that the lineups changed a little bit. How much input did the new guys have? Well, I worked heavily with this guy, Chris Collier, who, uh, I mean, he magically showed up in, in the creation of this record because I had to do it really fast. So he's like a producer slash writer and uh, an engineer. So we knocked out a lot of songs together. I mean, a lot of the ideas do come from me. Like I was on the road with Danzig for a month, and I have an iPad with this Apogee Jam into GarageBand. So I was able to lay down a bunch of riffs, and then when I get back home, I, I put them together. And uh, you know, it, it's all collaborative usually. You know, like Alexi and Jason had input on on the, on the title track, and you know, I just pick and choose from different riffs. Some you know, a couple other buddies helped me on the last record. You know, like Tony Campos, so uh, from a Static X. You know, I, you know it, it, sometimes I get together with a couple of people and you know we hash out a couple of ideas. So and I need that. I mean, I can't do it all myself, and you know, I need I need guys to be around me. And I, you know, I've been really blessed to have all these amazing dudes that you know have helped me out. Yeah, and, and you mentioned there that it was fast, and I'd actually read uh, that it was actually the fastest written and recorded prong album. Was that was that pressure put on you by the label, or was that you put on yourself? Yeah, that was on the la- put by the label and management, uh, and you know I went with that, so I felt like I had a job to do, and, and you know it, was, it, it, it disciplined me, and I said the sense of urgency to get it done you know, helps me get off my butt and, and do something. Otherwise, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll spend you know you know weeks uh, on one song or whatever so uh, having somebody to to have a hammer over my head really helps me a lot so i went with that you know and i think that's good yeah i do too I man i needed to do that too like you mentioned the carved into stone i mean it's been all these long periods between records and i've worked on other projects so having two uh successive records uh was really something that needed to be done and i want to continue doing that so you know so people can depend on you know a prom record every year and a half or two years you know maybe eps now and you just keep keep moving ahead i think that's the way to do it these days you know and some of ruining lives kind of reminds me of rude awakening it, it has that that almost techno metal sound going on and it's almost like ruining lives it's like you wrote a best of prong. Like, this is everything we sound like. Would you agree with that? Yeah, but I think there's a progression as well. I mean, the vocals have improved a lot. I mean, I really haven't known what I was doing for years. It's, I've, been having, yeah, I've been on the job training. I never really thought I was going to be a singer, and I didn't even really know I was going to be a guitar player, so I sort of got thrown into it. And I just think it keeps getting better. You know, if I really focus on what I'm doing, it keeps progressing. And, you know, we definitely had the foundation from Carved to Stone, and just moved ahead with that. So, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've written so many Bronx songs that I sort of inherently know what they're supposed to be like, and, you know, it's just hardwired that way. I mean, uh, uh, it wasn't like I m- mapped it out that much. I mean, I didn't have the time to. Yeah. You know, I- I'm, I'm a big Spotify fan, and I follow you over there on Spotify. And, and oh, I, great. Yeah, and I, I see all kinds of cool stuff. I think Spotify is such a great thing. Uh, is it profitable for a metal band to be on Spotify? 
Oh, absolutely. I, I think it's, that's the future. I mean, whether you want to reflect into the old days when, you know, you would hand deliver, I mean, this is how old I am. I mean, hand deliver <laughs> vinyl to a record store and sell them. I mean, that's what we, we did on, in the old days in, uh, before we got a record deal. And, uh, you know, just mailing people. I mean, we didn't have yeah. any of the technology that we do today, but you got to accept what, what, what's going on now. You know, the thing is, I mean, it's going to get to the point, I mean, I may be using hyperbole here, but I think it's going to get to the point where you make records to be on Spotify. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? And, and then uh, it is, there's so much interest generated from that, and then that enables you to sell records on the road and sell merch on the road to survive. I mean, it's all a matter of survival. You have to be willing, you know, uh, to live like a pauper if you're going to be in metal. I mean, don't yeah. expect, uh, you know, huge, you know, gangs of cash unless you're, you know, five finger death punch or revenge mm-hmm. Never Bold. Everyone at home, you know, bigger, older man. So, you know, I mean, Spotify is a great thing. Uh, and you know it, when you it goes on a scale. I mean, you do get royalties from it. Uh, we're not at that level of of plays where you're going to see anything, but uh, you know maybe inevitably. Yeah, and I always wonder myself if if possibly Spotify is the record label of the future. If they'll ever actually take that step, you know. No, I think it already is becoming that. Uh, you know, and you know, I know this just sounds a little intricate to the music business, but. Uh, you know, it's like labels now are, are yeah, they actually have to pay Spotify to have certain placement huh. and visibility on on that in order for, you know, so people are exposed to stuff. I mean, especially in America, it's very hard to expose a record. And, and uh, I think that that vehicle of that uh, is just uh, is miraculous, really, in a time when no one really knew what else was going to happen. And they, they provide that role in order to make that happen. Now you mentioned earlier about having to live like a pauper these days in metal, and, and I can't tell you how many stories I hear. You know, I it's it, it's absolutely a labor of love. Is it hard to keep a positive attitude having to live like that? You know. Well, you know what I mean. That goes into some of like the lyrical content of of uh, the new record, Rooting Lives, where. Uh, yeah, I mean that's always a struggle. I mean, you you know, it's very easily to fall into you know the the efforts. You know, I can just. You know, which means, you know, screw everything. This is all a waste of time. I I know from experience. Like, I mean, I, I fell into that rut many times, and it's not worth it. You might as well just keep going and, you know, accept things the way they are. I mean, what, what else are you going to do, really, unless you just, you know, you know unfortunately, I don't have, you know, a, a master's degree in, in biochemistry <laughs> to fall back yeah. on. I hear you, man. You just announced the uh, North American tour coming up, uh, starting in September. You'll actually be in Dallas at Trees Thursday, September eighteenth. Uh, how long is set? Are y'all looking at? Oh man, I mean, we got so much touring this year. Uh, it's just unbelievable. We got invited back to Europe two more times this year. So, I mean, the record really exploded over there, and uh, there's a lot of interest. Uh, playing major festivals over there. And then, you know, America is another thing. You know, mm-hmm. we just got to, you know, hit it hard. So from September through October, we'll be doing North America. And then we go to Australia and then back to Europe. So, uh, you know, this, this whole year is all booked, really. You're going to so, focus. Yeah, I mean, we're covering all of America this time. I mean, on Cards at the Stone, we really didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, this time uh, we're going to be able to play all the towns that we need to. Can we expect a good mix of new and old? Or are you going to focus heavily on ruining lives? No, we play a lot of old stuff. So, you know, you can't ignore cleansing and, like you mm-hmm. said, take to differ. And, you know, there's a, there's a heavy dose of those two records. And then, uh, you know, like the single turnover we've been playing and the title track, and we may add another one. And then, you know, three songs off the Carvings of Stone. So uh, it, it's a long set. The, the headlining set is long. I'm not sure if Dallas is with Overkill. I don't think it is. I don't think but, so. But, you know, a lot of this, there's a bunch of shows with them. And, uh, you know, I apologize if I don't know which ones are which. But uh, oh, hey. it's a long <laughs> set, and we cover a lot of material. And, you know, if, if you ever see anything on prongmusic.com or our Facebook page, people are uh, really happy with the set that we've been playing. So, you know, we don't ignore any of the older stuff at all. Absolutely. Look forward to catching y'all in Dallas. Again, Trees Thursday, September 18th. Prong has an amazing new album out called Ruining Lives. And Tommy, again, I can't thank you enough for talking to me today. Oh, man, thank you so much. It's really good to be on your show. Uh, you know, Kansas, well, you're, you're in Wichita, right? Yeah, Wichita Falls. Yep, Texas. Oh, Texas. Wichita Falls, Texas. Yep, yep. About an hour and a half outside the Metroplex. 
You, everyone's got to come down to that show with trees. It's a long set. We're going to have a really good time. I love the Deep Elm and uh, the whole vibe down there. I think it's can't, it's come back, you know? Yeah, yeah. So everyone, there's plenty of parking. Get your butts down there, and I'll see you then, Johnny.